Amen. To build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. John chapter 8, verse number 31. Look what he says. Jesus then said, uh, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. We're talking from the subject matter of making disciples. Somebody say making disciples. It's more than just coming to church. I got to get, I I get us to understand that it's more than just coming to church that pleases the heart of God. It's only when we get involved and, uh, and participate in God's plan that, uh, that he is pleased with us. Amen. And so we've been talking about how we can develop disciples here at our church because it's my assignment as, as pastor to teach the word of God in such a way that it builds you up to do what God told you to do. Amen. And so on, on last week, we began to talk about the partnership with the Holy Spirit. You know, we talked about in the past uh, the, the prosperity in our salvation. We talked about the preciousness of souls. We talked about the promise of our service. And last week we began to talk about the partnership with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you in Romans chapter uh, 10? Romans chapter 10? Because it is, it is three areas, three major areas of spiritual partnership that we must cultivate to experience God on another, on another level. Amen. The first partnership that we have is through salvation. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says... That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, the Bible says we shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So there is a, a partnership that I have with God when I get saved. Amen. And it is the will of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so it is the will of God for every man, woman, boy, and girl, no matter where you grew up, no matter what your race is, God wants you saved. Amen. He wants you to be a part of his family. And, and that's what happens at the moment of salvation. We, we become part of God's family. And that's his will. The second partnership that we said was on last week talking about partnering with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. And so as as uh, as we partner with him, we get the we get to experience this relationship with Holy Spirit that gives us the wisdom that we need so that we can live this life and walk by faith in this life. Amen. And then finally, there's a partnership with the, with the local church. It is God's plan that we live out our Christian experience in a local church. Now, there are some people who may watch by way of all of our technology and say, well, I don't need the church. I'll just watch you online. Well, that's not the plan of God. Go to Hebrews chapter number 10. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10. Yes, I, we thank God for the technology that we have. Amen. But there is no experience like being in the local body where we can love upon you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so it is God's plan for us to have this experience with one another. Because God has uniquely made us to be covenant people. We need each other. Amen. We need to hug on each other, love up on each other, and encourage one another in the days to come. Hebrews chapter 10, look at verse number 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 25. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so, so God says, go to church. Don't make an excuse that you don't need church anymore because you have all this technology. Amen. I mean, all we, we're on eight different platforms at the same time uh, through live stream. And so we thank God for it. But still, you need to be in the local body. Amen. Now, now, here's some benefits to having this this type of partnership, because when I partner with the Holy Spirit it's going to help Holy Spirit rescue the perishing others. Amen. Because God will use you to speak a word into somebody else's life. Because the Bible says that God is not willing that any, any should perish. So he uses us and rescues others through us, amen, through our testimony. When we give our testimony, others will get saved, amen. Because the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, praise the Lord. By partnering with the Holy Spirit, watch this now, I get the power of God operating in my life. Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 says, it talks about the power coming upon us, amen. Uh, and so, so as we get filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, we get the power operating in our lives. 
And then watch this now. When, when I partner with the Holy Spirit, it releases a praise on the inside of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when I partner with the Holy Spirit, there is a level of promotion in my life that I receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is looking for somebody to show off in. And so those of us who partner with Holy Spirit, he says, watch this now, I will raise you up. Amen. And, and, and when I'm humble, watch this now, he says, those of us who are humble in spirit, God in due time will raise us up. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then I begin to see things like God sees them. I have a different perspective on life when I partner with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I realize that it's not about me. Amen. It's about the lives of others, Sister Pew. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, we have an adversary that will fight this partnership with the Holy Spirit called the devil. Amen. And I don't want you ignorant of his devices when it comes down to you partnering with the Holy Spirit because he uses the same tactics on everybody. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 11. Look what he says. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so what the devil tries to do is to try to uh, confuse you with the philosophy of man. Amen? And so, so there, there, there are these uh, uh, new new generation thoughts that people are having these days about God. And uh, that's, that's just a trick of the devil to try to get you off track. Hallelujah, amen. Then, then, then the devil will cause you to procrastinate on your partnership with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Put things off. You don't have to do it today. Just, let, just, just wait till tomorrow. Well, if God told you to do it today, he meant to do it today. Amen. Amen, amen. Then uh, the devil will, will uh, try to trick you through paranoia, <laughs> amen, through offense, praise the Lord, amen. When you get offended, watch this now, the devil will use that to cause paranoia to come in because the devil will make you think that you just walk by somebody and you think they're talking about you. Paranoia, amen. They're at the water fountain getting a drink of water and you're like, mm, they must be talking about me. No, they're not talking about you. Stop being paranoid, amen. Hallelujah, amen. So, so that's what the devil will try to do. Amen. So repeat this confession after me. Father, I thank you for, for salvation and you placing me in your family and my local church as it has pleased you. Lord, I have great respect for all my brothers and sisters in the household of faith as we partner together to advance your work in our generation, I declare no weapon formed against us from within and without shall prosper in every tongue that rises against us. You give us wisdom to show to be false. We are steadfast to preach the gospel with the loss and minister to one another because we choose not to be distracted by gossip, offense, lies, and satanic strategies. I declare I'm in my set place. Therefore, I am partakers of the grace and favor that is on my pastor and on this ministry. I am in daily expectation of extraordinary blessings because of my faithful partnership connection Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So God wants us to partner. Amen. So, so now go to Psalms 56. Let's get to this other area tonight uh, that's called our praise and the supernatural. What happens when we praise God? And I'm here to tell you that something supernatural happens when we praise God. Amen. And so tonight's lesson is more about uh, uh, getting a revelation that's going to change our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I received that. That's going to change our lives. Watch this now. It's going to change our temperament, and it's going to change our, our, our outlook in difficult situations. Amen? See, Sister support, I found that, that when people are going through a challenge, that they forget one of the most important things, and that is to praise God. 
Amen. Most people go into their shell and decide that I'm just going to mope instead of giving God praise because he delivers us out of all of our situations. Amen. Amen. The Bible is, is very clear. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You're going to go through something. Amen. Amen. This 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 lie that has been told in the body of Christ that once you get saved that you're not going to have no problem. That's a lie. Amen. That's when the game get, get started. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, even though you're going through many afflictions, you just thank God that God, he delivers you out of them all. Amen. Amen. And so, so I, that's what I want you to get to tonight, that you get a revelation of praise and worship. Amen. And look, watch this now. Praise and worship is not about a song. Amen. Praise and worship is about a relationship with our father. Amen. So it will change my life. It will change my temperament. Amen. Even in difficult times. You're in Psalms 56. Look at verse number three. Psalms 56. Verse number three. Look what he says here. What time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Who praise the Lord. Amen. So, so he says, I'm putting my trust in God. Amen. And, and I'm going to praise God. And watch this now. Praise is a volitional act. I do it on my own. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, when I'm, when I'm facing difficult times and I get myself into fear, watch this now. He says, I put my trust in God and there's nothing that flesh can do unto me. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, okay, go to Psalms 50. Psalms 50. So I want to set the scriptorial foundation for this revelation so that your faith rests firmly in this truth and not an emotional experience. Amen. Because most people think about praise as having a high time in the Lord. Amen. OK, well, well there, there is an emotional display that we have when we praise God. But 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 what happens if I don't have that? Do I still praise God? Amen. If, if I don't shout at the top of my lungs, am I still praising God? If I don't run around the church, am I still praising God? If I don't stand up all day long in church and just clap my hands and shout, am I still praising God? Amen. Lady Gwen and I were in a church service one time and uh, many years ago. And uh, because we were not doing what they were doing, they were kind of looking at us kind of funny. You know, as if something was wrong with us. Now, I'm the guest speaker at the church. Amen? And I mean, they're going, they, I mean, they going off. I mean, they're they going off so much, they changed the drum out. You come get a little bit of this. But, but, but my thought process was, what happens when you leave this place? When the emotions settle down? Do you have enough word in you that you're able to handle the situations of life? Have you been taught enough that you are a disciple of God and not having a moment at the Apollo? Amen. Psalms 50. Look at verse number 23. Psalms 50. Verse number 23. Amen. See, when I have this revelation, it's going to give a persuasive co conviction about my praise. Look what he says here. Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. So when I offer praise to God, he says, I'm glorifying him. Yes. Amen. And so that's why I have to get this revelation about praise because I need to glorify God. We have been designed by God to glorify him. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And so when I glorify God, Cynthia, watch this now. I set myself up for some benefits of my praise. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Watch this now. Hebrews 13. Look at verse number 15. Hebrews 13, verse number 15. Look what he says. By him, therefore... Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How often? Continually 
that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So God says, it's not just a Sunday morning worship time that you praise me. He says, you have to develop a continual praise, amen, on a consistent basis with your own mouth. Hallelujah, amen. Now, go back to Psalms 107, Psalms 107. Now, when I talk about praise, I'm talking about the joyful, the joyful, passionate thinking and adoring of God. God, we adore you. Mm, mm, mm. The dynamic celebration of his goodness. God, you are so good to us. Amen. And then we celebrate his grace. God, it is because your grace and your favor that we're here today. Amen. Amen. So, so I, I adore God for who he is. Amen. I celebrate his goodness and I celebrate his grace. Amen. Psalms 107. Look at verse number eight. Psalms 107 verse number eight. Watch this now. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his what? For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. God is saying, look, I wish, I wish, I wish you would get it over to my people. That they would praise me, amen, for what I've already done for them, amen. Not for what I, I'm going to do for them, but what I've already, my goodness that I, I've given to them, amen. And when we recognize that God has been so good to us. You know, the old preacher used to say, he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves, amen. God has truly been good to us. And so when we praise God, listen, one of the things is, God, even if you don't bless me, not one more time. God, you've been good to me. Amen. Think about this for a second. God, you've given me the activities of my limbs. There's somebody that can't, can't walk today. God, you've been good to me. Amen. God, there's somebody that couldn't use their hands today. But God, you've been so good to me. Amen. God, listen, I might not have caviar on my table, but God, you've been good to me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So I praise God for his goodness. Amen. Now, here's the thing. We must understand that praise is required of his people. Amen. It's not optional. Amen. Praise is not optional. It's required. Now, thank God we don't all have to praise him in the same way. Amen. See, because you have been uniquely and wonderfully made by God. So listen, your praise is totally different than my praise. But God requires that I praise him. Think about this for a second. How is it that we're going to have the same praise and we, we've been delivered from different situations. Amen. There is no cooker cutter praise. Amen. It's an individual thing because God has been so good to us. Amen. <laughs> now, not only is praise required, watch this now, but praise is right. Amen. It's right. Amen. We serve, Carlos, we serve an awesome God, man. We serve an awesome God. And it is right to praise him. Amen, amen, amen. amen. And then watch this now. Then when I, when I get this revelation, Sister Gladiator, praise will be rewarded, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen. All right, go to Psalm 67, Psalm 67. So I got to ask the question. So I always ask these questions to solicit a response from God. So God, if, if praise is required and praise is right, and praise should be rewarded by you, then who should praise you? Amen. If praise is, is, is required and praise is right and you're going to reward my praise, who, who, who then should praise you? Amen. Watch this now. Psalm 67. Psalm 67. Look at verse number three. Psalm 67. Verse number three. Look what he says here. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let how many other people? Oh, no, just some of us. No, just the, just the right section over there. Just the center section. Just the section on this side. He says, no, all the people, amen, ought to praise him. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. So God says, watch this now. Every one of us. Not every other one of us, but every one of us should learn how to praise God. 
Okay, go to Psalms 150. Psalms 150. Psalms 150. Now, now, once you get to Psalms 150, say amen. Okay, now, now, look up, look up, look up, look up. Do this for me. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, good. I, I want to make sure y'all still alive. Verse number one. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let what? Everything that had breath do what? Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's why I had you to inhale and exhale because he says, if you got breath, you ought to be praising me. Amen. Every day you wake up. Amen. And you breathe in and you breathe out. That's that's your time to praise God. Let everything. Amen. Now, now he said, let everything. And then we just read let all the people praise him. So if you are breathing, amen, God has been good to you. The saved and the unsaved, God has been good to you, amen? Glory to God, amen. Okay, okay, so, so, okay, so, God, I understand that praise is required. I understand that praise is right. I understand that praise will be rewarded, okay? And I found out who should praise you. Everything that had breath should praise you, right? So, so then, why should we praise him? Amen? Okay, go to Psalm 68. Why should we praise him? Amen. Let's, let's get some reasons on why we ought to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Number one, we ought to praise God because he has been a father to the fatherless. <laughs> Glory to God. Psalm 68. Look at verse number five. Psalm 68, verse number five. You ready? Look what he says. A father of the fatherless. And a judge of the widows is God in his habitation. So, so there is no excuse that if your father wasn't around that you, you could say, I didn't have a father. God said, nope, I'm a father to the fatherless. So now we worship him because he's a good daddy. No, 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 no. Y'all understand. He is a good daddy. As a matter of fact, one of, the, one of the gospels says, if you do good to your children, how much more will God do for us because he's our heavenly father? Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I worship him because he's a father to the fatherless. I worship him, watch this now, and I praise him because he is a faithful God. <laughs> hey, there's nothing like our God, amen. God is so faithful to us. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Look at verse number 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 9. Look what he says. Mm -mm -mm. Watch this now. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with him, with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. God is a faithful God. Okay, watch this now. Let me show you how, how faithful he is. Go to Lamentations. Lama who? Lamentations. You should have had your iPad with you so you can find it real quick. Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. Let me show you how faithful God is. Yes. Lamentations chapter 3. Look at verse number 22. Lamentations chapter 3, verse number 22. Look what he says. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new what? Every morning, great is thy faithfulness. God is so grateful that every morning he gives us a new mercy. Not a stale mercy from yesterday, but a, a new mercy every day. Because he's faithful, amen? Amen. Watch this now. Watch this now. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Watch this now. Just talking about the faithfulness of God. Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse number 23. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 23. Look what he says. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he 
is faithful, that promise. So he said, now you hold your confession. You hold your profession of faith. Watch this now. Because God is a faithful God. Amen. And if he told you to speak it, it's going to come to pass. Glory to God. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. So why should I praise him? Why should I praise him? He is the father to the fatherless and he is a faithful God. Now watch this. Go back to Psalms. We're, gonna, we, we're in Bible study, so we study the Bible. Amen. So we got to see these attributes of God in order to praise him. Psalms 146. Watch this now. We praise him because he has provided us the food that we need. Amen. Look, look, look. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. It's not H-E-B that is our source for food. Amen. They are a resource. It's not market basket that's our source for food. Okay, H-E-B, market basket, give me a plug, give me a plug. I just gave them a plug, they need to send us an offering. But it is our Heavenly Father that provides for us. Psalms 146. Watch this now. Look at verse number five. Psalms 146. Verse number five. Look what he says. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. So God say, look, if you're hungry, I'll give you food. <laughs> no, see, y'all don't get it. Y'all don't get it. See, okay, okay, watch this. Growing up, many of us didn't have all the stuff that we have now. And, and it could be that food was on the slim pickings. Okay. Now, now it was seven of us growing up and seven children in our household. So, I mean, it wasn't much food going around. Amen. And so mama knew how to make a little go a long way. Amen. But I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. What? Or that seed make, making bread. Amen. God has a way of providing. I just want to show God has a way of providing what you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so, so we thank God for prov providing us food. Okay, go to Psalms 5, Psalms 5, Psalms 5, Psalms 5. Because not only does God, is he a father to the fatherless, not only is he a faithful God, not only does he provide food for us, but watch this now, he provides his favor for us. That he will raise up somebody, somewhere, to use their power and their ability and their influence to help us. The favor of God is on our lives, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say this. The favor of God is on my life. No, say it like you mean it. The favor of God is on my life. <laughs> and just because you connected to me, you're going to have favor too. Praise the Lord. Amen. Psalm 5. Psalms 5. Watch this now. Psalms 5. Look at verse number 12. Psalms 5, verse number 12. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor uh, wilt thou compass him as with the shield? Now, y'all know my favorite, my favorite story about the shield, right? Y'all remember this, the cartoon called Space Ghost? Remember Space Ghost? Andrew, you remember Space Ghost? Oh, you young. You're too young for that. You know what Space Ghost is? You remember, you remember Space Ghost had that little thing on his arm? Boom, and that shield come around him. That nothing could, could, could harm him then. Well, God says his favor is all around, it encompasses us. Amen. So, so God says, look, when you arrive, you're going to get preferential treatment because of the favor that's on your life. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not only is we, we praise God for his fatherhood. Amen. Ministry. Not only we, we praise God for his faithfulness and his food and, and his favor. But watch this now. We praise God because of his forgiveness. Has anybody ever messed up? <laughs> Everybody better raise their hand. I got my, my hands up. If I can get off my feet and put my feet up too, I'll put them up too. Go to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. See, this, these are reasons why we praise God. Because God, you have forgiven me of all my mess. And here's the thing. He does not remind me of all my stuff, that all the mistakes I made in my past. Amen. Think about that. He's faithful to us, 
but then he forgives us. Amen. And those of us who have more errors on that record, we ought to praise him a little bit louder and a little bit more because of all the stuff that he's been. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. First John chapter one. Look at verse number nine. First John chapter one, verse number nine. If we confess our sins, he is that our word is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now, jump over to Hebrews chapter 8. Watch this now. Not only does he forgive us, but here's it. Man, if you get this revelation right here. Hebrews chapter 8. Look at verse number 12. Hebrews chapter 8. Verse number 12. This, see, this, this, this shouting stuff right here. See, this is stuff that calls you to praise God right where you're sitting at. Amen. I'm not. Look, look. When you just think about, oh, my God. And you think about all the stuff you've done that was contrary to the will of God. And God forgave you. Amen. And watch this verse. Watch, watch what he says here. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Glory to God. Amen. God said I'm not even going to remember that stuff. And so here's, here's what, Allen, here's what the devil will do. The devil will try to remind you of all your past, amen, to bring condemnation on you. And then you start thinking that God is thinking like the devil. And you go to God and say, God, you remember? And God said, what you talking about? What you talking about? I don't remember that. I, I look, look, that, that stuff is gone. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm getting all excited. I'm getting all excited. Amen. Amen. OK, so, so I, I, I praise God. I praise God for his fatherhood ministry. I praise God because he's faithful. Watch this now. I praise God because he provides food for me. I, I praise God because he gives me favor. I praise God because of his forgiveness. Watch this now. And then I praise God because he fellowships with me. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. Watch this now. Hebrews 13. He fellowships with us. In other words, he have communion with us. Amen. Watch this now. Hebrews 13. Look at verse number five. Hebrews 13, verse number five. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I got to read that out to Amplified. Hebrews 13, five out of Amplified. Let your character and moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself, had said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. God says, I will not, I will not. Look, I'm always fellowship with you. Woo, Jesus, amen. That's something to praise God for, amen. Amen. That God says, I'm not going to let, let you go. I'm going to always be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, now go to uh, First Chronicles, First Chronicles. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. Hallelujah. So I praise God for, for his fatherhood ministry. I praise God for his faithfulness. I praise God for him providing food for me. I praise God for his favor. I praise God for his forgiveness. I praise God for his fellowship. And watch this now. I praise God for his finances. Amen. That God will provide finances for me. Amen. <laughs> watch this now. Uh, First Chronicles 29. Look at verse number 13. First Chronicles 29, verse 13. Now, therefore, our, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For how many things? All things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. So look, look, what, look, what, look what he's saying. He said, what I have, I got it from you. Amen. And what I got from you, I'm going to give it back to you. 
Amen. So, 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 so when it comes down to, to sowing, God, I thank you because I know what I have. It belongs to you. It says the silver is mine and the gold is mine, said the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So we dealt with who should praise him. We, we dealt with why we should praise him. Now let's look at when we should praise him. <laughs> Amen. Because some folks just fall in and think that the only time I praise him is uh, on Sunday mornings and Wednesday night doing praise and worship. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Psalms 119. Look at verse 164. Psalms 119, verse number 164. Huh. Psalms 119. Verse 164. <laughs> Watch this now. You, you, you better get this. Psalms 119. Verse 164. Look what he says. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. How many times a day? So, so, so I got to find at least seven times where I can just praise God. Amen. While I'm in my cubicle, God, I praise you. <laughs> They don't, look, everybody don't even know what's going on, but look, God, I'm going to praise you. While I'm in my car driving to work, I'm going to praise you, God. Look, look, while I'm in the shower, I'm going to praise you. See, I, look, you got to find times where you're going to just praise God, amen? He said, look, you got to look for, look, look to praise me. Woo, Jesus, amen? Okay, all right, watch this now. Psalms, uh, Psalms 34, Psalms 34, watch this now. Psalms 34. Psalms 34, watch this now. Woo, anybody getting blessed by this tonight? Amen. Psalms 34. Look at verse number one. <clears throat> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name how often? Together. Amen. So there is, a, there is an individual time to praise, but then there is a corporate time to praise. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Glory to God. Okay, Psalms, Psalms 103, Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Look at verse number 22. Psalms 103. Oh, I got to hurry. Psalms 103. Verse number 22. Psalms 103. Verse number 22. Watch this now. I want to show you that it's, you're not limited to where you do it at. Okay? Look what he says. Bless the Lord, all his works, in what? In all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So wherever I am, that's a good place to worship. That's a good place to praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Ooh, look, I, I, you know, it is refreshing to know that God promises to get involved in our situations to bring heaven's resources, heaven's abilities to bear, assuring us that we're going to have victory when we praise him. Okay? So watch this now. When I praise God, God steps in to ambush my enemies. No, no, no I got to finish this thing because I, I got I to teach this thing like God put it into my spirit. See, when you, when you learn how to praise God, you get this revelation that when I praise God, God says, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to step in and ambush your enemies for you. Second Samuel. Second Samuel 22. Watch this now. Second Samuel 22. Look at verse number four. Second Samuel 22. <laughs> mm. Look what he says. Verse number four. 2 Samuel 22, verse number 4. I will call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. <laughs> God, and look, just make, take a note of this. 2 Chronicles, chapter 20. And you can start at verse number uh, 15, all the way down to verse number 25. You remember Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat was having a problem, amen? And uh, God tells Jehoshaphat, look, this ain't even your battle. This battle is mine. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to send the praisers out in front. Amen. And look, you let them start praising me and watch what I do. I'm going to ambush your enemies for you. 
<laughs> okay, so, so, so when, I, when, I, when I learn how to praise God and get God involved in my situation, God's going to bring heaven resources and his abilities to bear, assuring me that I have the victory. Now, just make sure you get that now. Now, watch this now. When I praise God, watch this now, he's going to step into my atmosphere and empower me. Oh, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter five. OK. When there is a corporate praise, listen to me now. There is something about us coming together to praise God that gets God's attention, that he comes in and gets in the atmosphere with us. OK. As a matter of fact, Psalm says this, that God inhabits the praises of his people. But I got to show you this one. Watch this now. Second Chronicles chapter five. Look at verse number 13. Look what it says. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good for his mercy endured forever. Then th that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. When we learn how to praise God right, it's, look, there's going to be a charged atmosphere. Amen. That God says, I, look, I'm going to get involved in that thing. I'm going to show up. I'm going to get involved in your situation, and I'm going to, I'm going to create something in the atmosphere. Amen? <laughs> praise the Lord. All right? All right? Watch this now. Then, then, then when I learn how to praise God, there's something about praising God that calls acceleration of things to happen. Amen? Just take a note of this. In John chapter, 11, uh, chapter 6, they were having this challenge of feeding folk. And Jesus asked the question, hey, hey, what do we have to serve all these people? And they said, we don't have enough. But, but Jesus says, when I praise God, he's going to accelerate something. He said, what do we have? He said, well, we got this boy, got a couple pieces of fish, a few loaves of bread, but what are there among so many? He said, give it to me. I'm going to show you how to accelerate things. Jesus takes the little boy's lunch. And he begins to praise God and thank God for the provisions that he had. And when he did that, it accelerated it. That 5,000 men had enough to be fed and they still had some left over. Acceleration, amen. See, that's what praise does for us. It causes acceleration, amen. Woo! And watch this now. When I praise God, he steps in, Sister Porter, to accommodate my escape. <laughs> See, when you're in a tight situation and you need to get out, let me recommend you praise God. Now, 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 just so you have a scripture reference. You remember Paul and Silas were locked up in jail? They were in the innermost part of the jail. They weren't just in jail. They was in the innermost. They were in solitary confinement. And so the Bible says in Acts chapter 16 that something happened one night. That they began to sing and praise God for who he was. Amen. And then supernaturally something happened that 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 God, God got them out of a situation. Amen. Watch this. And I'm telling you that when you're in your most difficult situation and you need God to break you out, learn how to praise God. Amen. Because he will accommodate your escape. Amen. That's how Jonah got out. Amen. See, y'all see Jonah, jo Jonah, Jonah was going in the wrong direction. And, and boy, he was in the, in, in the, fish, in the big fish mouth, and, and he began to praise God, and, and something supernatural happened. He started, he started praising God right where he was, with seaweed all around him. Amen. And then watch this now. When uh, I learned how to praise God, come on, y'all. He steps in to accomplish our expectations. Woo, Jesus. There's something about praising God that causes our expectations to be met. Proverbs 23, 18 talks about that my expectation will not be cut off. And so, so whatever I'm expecting God to do when I praise him in advance, 
it gets the expectation that I've been desiring from him. Because God, I'm expecting you to do it. I'm praising, I'm praising you in advance. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm praising you in advance, amen. And so, so as I praise you, my expectation is that whatever I'm believing for is going to show up. Amen. And so in the days to come, in the days to come, watch this now. I'm believing to see a move of God. That will supernaturally bless our church and the lives of the people of God. The question is, who will believe God enough to offer a sacrifice of praise? That's the question. Will you believe God enough that you offer a sacrifice of praise? Will you dare to believe God? So that as we create a season of praise, that we will begin to see supernatural results, supernatural healings, supernatural deliverances, amen, supernatural expectations being met. But, but we have to set the atmosphere for him, amen. And I believe that in the days to come that God will set a spiritual ambush, amen, to dismantle the barriers in the people's lives. Amen. So that we can boldly praise him. Unashamedly. Freely. God, we just worship you. Amen. So let's set the atmosphere right now. Stand to your feet. Amen. Let's give God some praise right now. Amen. <laughs> Build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry.